Hello, it's Lick of the Day 53, and I hope you're doing good today. Anyways, we're getting back to our blues and G with the quick change. Now, if you recall from the last Lick of the Day, Lick of the Day 52, I took a, a uh, West Montgomery solo, and we played it over like a standard type of blues, not a jazz blues. Now, you got to remember, this is an important uh, point to remember that Wes is playing over a jazz blues, right? And we're not playing over a jazz blues. So how how does that work? And it works because there's really not a big difference between a jazz blues and a standard type of blues um, up to like the eighth bar, really. Um, so the first half, it's like the same thing almost. Yes, there's a few more chords in the jazz blues, but it's not really that big of a difference and you don't have to really pay attention to those changes. Um, now, a jazz player might pay attention to them or he might not pay attention to them. Um, it doesn't make any difference. They're totally interchangeable. You can mix and match. So a lot of jazz players will just play like what a normal guitar player might play in the first half. But... Um, we can take advantage of jazz blues and play some of the licks that they might play in a jazz blues over a normal blues. It works pretty much the same way. Now, up to that point, um, that's fine. But at bar eight, that's not going to work anymore because the changes are really different in a jazz blues from um, bar eight on to the end. So at that point, you, you got to start playing like a jazz player or it's not going to work out. All right. So um, this time around, I'm taking a, a, a Hank Mobley sax solo and um from a song he recorded called uh dig this and it's um it's 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 a great solo and there's lots of cool bebop stuff going on but the solo that i stole i thought was interesting because it sounds just like what a guitar player would do and so we're gonna steal some of his licks and use it in a normal kind of blues and see how it works okay so he plays this This is standard guitar licks, right? You know. So he that's he does that. And he, and he does it in the first bar, he repeats it in the second bar, and he repeats it again in the third bar. So over the one chord, the four chord, and the one chord again. Now there's something you should sort of remember. When you play that lick, when you play that B-flat note, you got to remember there's a major third in the chord. But this is a minor third from the probably the blues scale, right? So you want to flirt with that note because that major third has a big attraction to that flat third and you bend it a little bit. So... Don't bend it all the way, just a little bit. And that's really sort of what the blues is all about, that interplay between the minor and the major third and that little gray area in between. Now, on the four chord, you don't want to bend that note because that note is in the four chord. So it sits well in there. You don't want to mess with it. So you're going to go like this on the one chord. Four chord. One chord again. Right? And that's what he does. Now, now in the jazz blues, in the fourth bar, there's usually a 2-5 in C. C is that four chord, right? So he wants, usually jazz players want to set up that four chord by like going like this. So there's a lot of tension there. So they want to put tension in the lick that they play right on that fourth bar. And Hank does that too. He goes like this. And it's great on guitar. It's really easy on guitar. Because look, it just you play this. It's the sixth and the fifth of that G chord. And then you just move it down in half step. And then when it gets to this point, you're on that four chord. And that's the root and the flat seven of that four chord. So it works out perfectly. It's like genius. 
And from there, he just plays a standard jazz sort of thing that, you know, like, if you've been following my Barry Harris lessons and stuff, you know, it's something that's right from that sort of chromatic scale that he likes to use. <laughs> And that last thing is just a C7 arpeggio. So from top to bottom. And, and then, you know, we can go into the rest of the blues and playing it any way we want. Um, now, Another distinction I thought of have been like debating with myself is that you see this thing here? It, it's good to play it that way. You can do interesting things that way. Or if you don't want it to sound so much like a pattern, try to play it in a different place. So, um, that's what we got in this lick of the day. Um, so I'm going to play the demo here, okay? If you want the PDF with the full uh, explanation and analysis, um, go to Patreon and get that PDF. And you're by doing that, you're sort of becoming a sponsor of these lessons because, um, you know, I'm going to keep going and... It's just a way to help spread good old American blues guitar playing and, you know, around the world to people who aren't so fortunate. OK, so um, if you're interested in helping to sponsor that, go to the Patreon and um, it's about a dollar a lesson. It's not that expensive, but, you know, don't do it if you don't have that kind of money. If you don't have it, just enjoy it and, uh, you know, maybe help um, sharing it and so more people will uh, be able to check them out okay so uh, check out the demo i hope you like it goodbye <laughs>